Hi everyone, this is Hasna Dipu from Orco. Orco is the vocal for all expatriate Bangladeshis all over the world. Mr. Mamun is the founder of Adventure Advocacy Group of Kirka in Bangladesh and he is also the partner of uh, social uh, startup venture Urban Launchpad. And we have a lovely young lady, Adventure Teaser, Sarah John uh, Jane Saltmarsh, from, uh, who has one foot in the uh, Asia and another food in Northern Australia. So they came all the way uh, crossing from Alaska to Toronto uh, with a bike ride for a cause. We will now hear from them uh, what is the cause for that and uh, uh, what is the reason behind that and we would we'll like to hear, from, hear the whole story from them. So let's, uh, I will start with the same moment. So we know this is the second tour of Trash Mania and trash many we want to hear from you like uh, what is trash many and all thank you so much trash many is a advocacy campaign uh, basically uh, we like to give people an idea how much trash we make from our daily life and how much trash we throw uh, during our daily commute uh, on street Highway, freeway, whatever you say. Since it's a bike ride, and you know, bike uh, bicycle has a great advantage. It has, uh, it, it is slow. It's a way slower than car. So if you ride a bicycle, you can actually see a lot of unseen thing that you will never ever experience while you are driving in a car. Yeah. So trash maniac is a concept. I would say. Uh, trash is trash. Maniac means you are actually trash. You are way more concerned than average people. Obsessed. Obsessed with trash in positive way. So this was our second trip having the same title called Trash Maniac. And we uh, do this trip for a reason. The reason is uh, the first trip when we have done it in the United States. USA has the highest per, uh, per capita consumption of plastic in the world. Same as Canada. Canada will be number two or three. So our target is to go to those countries who has more per capita consumption of plastic. Because uh, every plastic based product has a carbon footprint. And since we are like we are from Bangladesh, we, we call we live in ground zero. That means if there is a signal, uh, well, it's not, I would say, if there is a small rise of ocean, we will be the first nation who will go under the water. So, what we are trying to do, we are trying to give an idea like your daily habit, daily life and habit can actually be a threat to a big nation or a big number of people. That's the, I would say, that's the main, uh, well, focus of our ride. Thank you. And so we know that you do the track and uh, you do record and we, you also talk with people regarding the trash, right? Yeah. So I will, uh, my next question to Sarah, so how do you track and talk and uh, aware people of this trash? Sure. Well, we track trash using an application uh, which was developed. Uh, so that was developed before the first ride. So we track everything we see by, by, basically we take a sample. So we watch all day, I mean you, honestly on a bike you're not going so quickly so you have plenty of time to watch the side of the road and then you remember what you see through the day and then we, what we put into the application is a sample. So we might say within like a one kilometer, two kilometer stretch, let's give a represented representation of what we saw today so then it's sorted into categories and we you know press different buttons for plastic bottles for cans um, for plastic bags that sort of thing so that's how we track it it comes up on a uh, on our website it's uh, it's shown on a map so you can follow the trash and you can follow our journey along the way and see um, a sample of what we're seeing mm, we talk to people as in it's not like a formal advocacy we're not holding seminars or anything because let's be honest that has been done many times and it's had different uh, different success rates. So ours is more informal, just talking to people about what we're doing, and it's more um, 
I guess it's it sounds a little cliche, but it's kind of like being the change, saying, well, actually, we're biking, and it's not the easiest way to get across <laughs> Canada, obviously. Um, so we're, yeah, doing this on bicycles, we're, we, this is what we're passionate about, and so we're hoping to share a bit of that passion with you. Not really telling people, like, this is what you have to do, but saying, you know, have a think about it. Like, a, a small change from a whole lot of people can mean, I mean, it could mean the the continuation of a country like Bangladesh or, or the end of a country that, that has 160 million people living in it. Right, right. Okay, so uh, my next question to you. So how did this concept came up and how did you team up? What's a little bit history behind the whole story? Uh, personally, I've been working uh, with the trash thing for the last eight, nine years. So the program we have initiated in Bangladesh, it's called International Coastal Clean. It was in 2006. So I would say that was the first initiative that helped me to understand about trash. And we were working on basically on marine debris. We used to or still we work on marine debris, but when we were working on marine debris, we have found 80% of the marine debris is sourced from the land. So land is the biggest uh, contributor of producing trash or debris or whatever it is. So what I thought, how this uh, land-based based trash are coming to the ocean. So that means trash can actually travel. Okay. And if I can, or if it is possible to visualize the land-based trash, it will be easy to understand the trash situation because at the end of the day, no matter where the trash is, it will have ended up going to a water bottle or a landfill. That's the uh, interesting part. We, no matter where we go, we talk about we talk about recycle, reuse, you know, all these things, yeah. catchy things. But even in the United States, their recycle rate is way less than any well, way, way less than the bridge or say. In that situation, when well, I thought like if I can, what I can do from my uh, personal side, like being individual, what I can do, what you can do, just being an individual. What I, and I thought like if I can uh, visualize the trash uh, from up to other people, they can understand the situation more than reading anything. So that was the purpose. trash per day and if this i is an x number of people then it will be x to the power 100 number of trash you can actually show it on map and the tra technology we are using it's very simple android based uh, application and every clicks are geotagged so when we specify something it's geotagged so you can literally see the location of the of that place or the particular trash. So that was the uh, initial uh, yeah, idea, behind, idea the behind the whole story. So my next question will be, how did you team up? Uh, we know there is another team member of you in yeah. the Trash Maniac. Yeah. So how did you team up? Well, actually when uh, we, uh, we have done Trash Maniac 1 in the US in 2012. And this time, after 2012, we have been thinking where we can go. And China was the most uh, appropriate, could have been the best country to go, but you know, for us it's a little hard. So can, uh, after China, Canada is the most important one. Then when we have finalized the destination, I have, well I thought about Canada and then uh, last uh, last time when I was in the US, I Donald Thai, the guy who was riding with us. He, he came with me, he came to USA to pick me from Bangladesh and I went for the ride he went for a bike uh, driving trip. So from since then he was saying, you know what, if you do it next time I will be definitely join you. So that's how he got into the world. Then I I I know Sarah Jen for well, three years and she has been working with you in the UN in Bangladesh and she was a great help on every adventure or advocacy thing we have been doing in Dhaka or Bangladesh. 
So when I was, we were talking about this ride, like, yeah, like uh, eight, nine months ago, she said, no, I only give it a try. I said, all right. So that's how we get it. It's nothing formal. It's pure <laughs> informal and it's like a funny thing. Also. And uh, uh, one more thing we want to add, they are, uh, in Trash Maniac, there is another team member called uh, Konok Aditto. He is the uh, lead vocalist of uh, the Bangla band Jolir Gan, and he also the managing partner of uh, uh, Deshaw. Actually, uh, well, owner. Means owner of Deshaw. Owner okay, owner of uh, uh, ethnic Bangla band. Okay, so my next question is to Sarah. So you did all, the first journey was from Seattle to Washington and this second Trash Maniac 2 was from Alaska to Toronto and you did the whole journey with Tandem Bike, right? Yeah, <laughs> well actually um, I wasn't involved in the first one, um, so this is this is my first long trip, um, so definitely kind of a long one for, for the first time that I, I mean I hadn't done any long adventure like this, so yeah, I, I mean, Bike is certainly a different way to travel, and I would say it doesn't come without challenges. <laughs> but yeah, it's I mean, it's if you can get through it, it's a really interesting way to travel. And I guess the best thing about it is, um, you know, this uh, this bike ride had a big advocacy component, and obviously, a tandem bike, especially a folding tandem with small wheels, is a big talking point, <laughs> right? So, it means that people feel, yeah, they're super comfortable to come up and say, hey. What are these small wheels? What is this bike? What are you guys doing? And so then you can kind of talk about, you know, this is what we're doing and why. Um, and then, you know, the, the obvious question, like, oh, one of you is from Australia and the other one is from Bangladesh. How does that work? And then, you know, telling people that especially, I mean, you can you can hear somebody from their own country being very passionate about a cause, but when you hear someone from an absolutely opposite country also passionate about it then I can kind of relate to them and say you know I also come from a, a country which is I mean we produce a whole lot of plastic based trash but these are some small things that you can do um, so I guess I can kind of connect with people on that I like have that familiarity with them as well so it kind of adds adds to our um, yeah advocacy as well yeah. okay so obviously the next question to um, so, what is your next target? Are you going to another country? What's your next uh, plan for Trash Maniac? Okay. As I have said earlier, you know, Trash Maniac is designed or yeah, designed to be to have this kind of ride in industrially developed country. Those who are contributing more carbon, and those who are those who are uh, uh, consuming more plastic-based product. So, in that, you know, at least there are a couple of countries actually. Let's say after USA, Canada, well, China, Australia. So if we think we are we are doing this right every after two years because you know no one is funding this right and we are self-funded and yeah and self-help group. So it takes some time to uh, get some you know add in some money and make the plan and yeah it takes some time and maybe next year there's a very good chance you might go to Australia or China. But yeah, we'll go somewhere. Okay. Okay. So, and um, is there any um, uh, plan to enlarge the team uh, to Sarah? Well, you know, I'm not really sure. Like, it's um, it's something which is. I mean, it's tough to get people involved with, okay? Because it goes for quite a while, and it's not cheap. Like Imran said, you know, people are people have to pay out of their own pocket. So. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I guess also um, the idea is to get get the the data that we've collected um, more widely spread. I mean, the i the idea behind it is that you know trash is one of these kind of mm, dirty things that you know it's it cannot dirty is awkward. You know, people are not actually when you say even when you say to people you know we're cycling across your country measuring trash they're kind of like oh. What are you finding? You know, like it's kind of awkward. So the the idea of putting it on a map is like visualizing that to say actually it is existing. You're contributing. Do something about it. Um, so I guess it will be um, to put the findings that we've got from this ride um, it, to get people to know about them and see them, um, and then we'll see from there. I have another question. To you. That is, uh, how do you define your trash talk? <laughs> 
it's kind of a trash talking, right? So, but your definition obviously have a new definition to the world, right? So, how do you define that? Sure. Um, well, I guess um, what I like the biggest um, challenge that we come across is people saying, you know, people um, taking the concept to trash and saying it's a really big deal and the environment is huge and what can I do about it? Ah, it's all corporates, you know, big, big, big scene things. And so we're the way that I um, approach it is by saying. You know, actually there's 7 billion people in the world and that means that if 7 billion people make a tiny change, that is one big change. You know, so it's kind of saying to people like, just forget about the big picture and forget about like, oh, you know, the world's ending and there's, you know, like there's floods and droughts and everywhere. Forget about the big picture for a little bit and just think about you. And you know, how much do you use? Can you, instead of thinking like, you know, stick to reduce, reuse and recycle. Don't just think about recycling, but you know, like, can you just carry a water bottle? Can you carry a shopping bag? You know, small things, like just start small. And if, if everybody started thinking small and a bit old school, then um, yeah, then, then we can all, we can see massive changes. It's a clear message to everyone. And uh, I will just ask uh, during this journey, uh, you met one Dutch couple in Alberta going to uh, Banff, right? And you met that they were also riding in the same uh, uh, tandem, right? So how fun was that? And how did you meet them? Yeah. It was actually fun because uh, from Alberta we became two. Like we used to be three. We used to be four. Then we lost one. Then one of them went back to home from Alberta, uh, from Banff. Uh, so that was our first day. We just we have we were staying in Banff Center. So we started riding from Banff Center when, when we hit the city center. We have found, you know, we have seen another couple almost. <laughs> yeah. Imagine say it was kind of oh. like, Imran, there's something in our review mirror. He's like, what is it? I don't know. It's like, it, I don't know what kind of, it looks like a, I don't know, people are we're wearing yellow cycling jerseys. I don't know, they're, it's kind of yellow and it's kind of big and it looks like a cycle, but there's two people. And Imran's like, what, what is it, Sarah? Come on. Is it like a another tandem in people in yellow? No, it's not. Sir, it's not. No, it is. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was really shocking because you know, when you ride a tandem, you actually cannot see all of your backside. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's more like you know, like, you, know you, you have seen conductor and helper in Dhaka. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The driver doesn't see it all. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> they, they just say, okay, just go ask, left, yeah. go, go yeah. right. Yeah. The same thing. There's no banging on the bike. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, throughout the journey you can meet people, it's really fun and uh, we know that uh, you also celebrated your birthday on yeah. these journeys and how did it go? Yeah, it was great. We're in um, Winnipeg, so oh. it was, you know, it's great. It's the capital of Manitoba, which we found, honestly, like, they, you know, it says um, Manitoba is the most friendly state or something. Mm -hmm. Literally, they are. They're so <laughs> friendly. Yeah, I know that so it was great being in Winnipeg. And Winnipeg's a, it's a really interesting city. So we, you know, wandered around and um, and it was. It, they've got a really interesting multicultural mix, and mm -hmm. so it was great. We we wandered around. We did some biking, mm -hmm. ate some great food. You know, the way a birthday should be spent. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Okay, okay. and. Uh, so as you said about the food, let's say uh, you unfortunately condemned to die and uh, someone said that, okay, you have the last chance to have food in this world. So what is your menu? Well, you know, would it be Australian or would it be Bangladeshi? Yeah, well, like. <laughs> I, would, oh, I would say in, in, if I was back home, it would be like, I don't know, I'm pretty Australian, maybe a bit of my toast. I love it like anything. <laughs> if it was in Bangladesh, I would definitely say maybe like Jim Bortha. Oh, okay. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the roadside team worked. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we couldn't get mustard oil to almost the end of the trip. We only saw one Bangladeshi family on the whole trip um, until now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got some mustard oil, so that was that was great. Yeah, it was in <laughs> Saskatchewan. What? It was in Elrose, the, the, the small town. The it's middle of nowhere. The middle of nowhere. <laughs> 300 people lived there. And the wow. guy, <laughs> he runs a restaurant and a good business. And it was so amusing because he, you know, we heard this, oi, you know, oi, oi, and, you know, we kept going and everyone said, you know, come on, let's go, Sarah, you know, we need to find a, a place to stay around. And I said, no, let's go back and this little bungalow, she found it. Oh, wow. oh, we saw the flag. <laughs> that was so okay. amazing. That, that was the well, really biggest surprise we have. I have yeah. got. <laughs> I'm on 300 people, you've got one. Yeah. 
what's the chances, <laughs> hey? And immediately they were like, we're cooking for you and can you come and stay for a bit? It was really, and you know the funniest thing they said, you know, you can stay for the next day, but can you do some errands for us? Can you go and buy some, you know, pizza bases? Can you go to the shop? I was like, do I work for a Bangladesh restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, we were driving around. Really and you know funny. what, in Saskatchewan, everything is 200 kilometers far. <laughs> and, you know, I come from Australia, how huh? we drive on the opposite side grocery, of the road. Right? So it was like, Imran, so Imran, Sudin, stay on the right side of the road. I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're uh, almost at the end of the session. So, do you have any uh, message to all the young generation among the world? Yeah, I I say one thing. Nowadays, you know, uh, everybody is a believer. Either they believe in God or either they believe in themselves. Everybody believes. If we can believe in one thing, less consumption of anything, that is the biggest contrib contribution to the art. If you actually believe in good for the art, I am sure if there is anyone on the top, he will, he will listen to you. Just don't buy everything. Just stop buying everything. What you don't need, don't buy it. You won't prove poor. Poverty is different. Don't buy anything you need. No. Just restrict yourself. Not restrict. Try to be, you know, judge yourself whether you actually need it or not. That's it. Consume less. Yeah, and I would say, like, you know, yeah, they, they seem common sense things, you know just carry a bag and carry a water bottle you know that's the the frustra most frustrating thing I think we saw along the road was that you know you're not seeing a huge we saw some weird trash for sure but we mostly saw the same stuff you know there was like there was three things there was plastic bags plastic water bottles like pop bottles you know drink bottles and disposable cups like just take a thermos like your own cup for coffee take your own water bottle take your own plastic bag those three things if, you know, if we could get more people to do that, we would just see so much less trash. You can only use those things once. Like, it's such a small thing to do. So, I would say, like, yeah, concentrate on those three things. Stop buying one-use coffee cups. Okay. So, thanks, Imran Bhai. Thanks, Sana. Thanks a lot. So, that's all about uh, Muntasir Mamu. We just heard about them from Trash Maniac. And we hope all the success in the future. Thanks, everyone.